every QS. And uh, I was like, nah, I'm done. I'm going home. I'm not going to do the next contest. <laughs> like, wow. like, but that's how quick things came. Yeah, and the yeah. next thing I know, um, you know, I was in the final in Tahiti. I get rookie of the year. And in my world, as I knew the world, it was just like, it was like this. It was sure. just vertical. Everything I did, or it just worked out. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I'm living in that world, and um, I want to experience as much as I can. I get married, have a kid, and it's just <laughs> like it, it was bound to come to an end. Like there's, I mean, it'll be the first time you planted a crop, and you're just like, oh my gosh, it's the sun's out, it rains right. every day, mm-hmm. it's the perfect crop, everyone wants it, and I planted a lot of it. Like you can't compare it to anything else, and then you have another season, and you're like, oh my gosh, no one wants this crop, and no, yeah, I don't, I didn't know the other, so it was a lot of looking back where. Um, I did was on the other side, right? And then, you know, the, the, so it was cool. I was able to experience both of the worlds. And I'm talking about some good times, but man, there was way more of the bad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm thankful for that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it's interesting. Your career, you had a very quick early ascent, mm-hmm. and then it peaked. And it, and it definitely, you, you kind of you lost your sponsorships, uh, you know, or full sponsorship with Globe and, you know, it was real difficult. You, you, it almost was like you had to fight your way back up, and you got that experience after experiencing the success. You know, it was like you you, you experienced all this success, and everything came really quick, and probably, uh, I don't want to say too much too soon, because you, se- you seem to have had your head on the whole time, like straight, and not, didn't get too big. But it's like you then became like an underdog almost after you won your world title it became like you you know like everything kind of fell crashing down it seemed like and then you had to fight and pick yourself back up it, it's funny when you say too much too soon because um everyone lives in that world like yeah. hey i'm gonna give you a hundred grand right now or what if i just pay you eight thousand dollars for you know, the next four or five years, you know, yeah. you're going to go like, dude, I know myself, I'll take eight grand for, <laughs> you know, and like that's, but when you're in the job and you're doing things like you, I couldn't dictate that. Yeah. So it, it did come quick and yeah, I'm a human it. being. Yeah. Everyone else is going to, you're going to burn through it. It's just what it is. Even if you kind of even knew the other side. So yeah, I'm not saying it was a setup for failure, but I, there was probably like, eight years of going to the top and then because I was on tour for 17 yeah. years right so then there would have been like you know actually I guess it was a pretty good balance you know yeah. like nine or ten on the way down and then sort of pulled out of the nosedive or just sort of like uh, just the way the ebb and flow of life was working and then uh, I ended up you know signing on with Salty Crew and, 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 and being an owner there and sort of started from nothing and, and I just wanted to grow that so I could get out of surfing and retire and um and now I'm sort of like living the dream again, you know, and it, it's not that things are taken away and it's not hard, but I'm just, I'm in a really, really like ideal. If you look at it chronologically, that's like, gosh, it actually worked out pretty good. <laughs> you know, like if you were look at, if you look at it a moment in time, you're like, oh yeah, you're top five in the world. You don't have a major sponsor. Like if you look at those, if you look at things in that moment, yeah. You could say it sucks, yeah. but if you look at it from a higher altitude over a longer period of time, you're like, that was perfect. That's yeah. exactly what you needed right then. It's, it's funny like how we, we create these narratives about ourselves yep. over time. And, and these and, themes, right? Yeah. This just keeps happening to me. Yeah. Can't get rid of this one. <laughs> you know, you experience it and you look back and you, looking back, having that higher altitude perspective, you can see where all the pieces fit, obviously. What was it like then making this film and trusting someone else to tell your narrative? And actually, he had to tell, Justin had to tell two narratives, basically, and try to put them, piece them together. Uh, and like, one, one question I always think, have for people who have movies about them is, what's it like seeing someone else inter- interpret your story, your life story uh, on the screen? And does that fit with your internal narrative? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely uh, an experience that it's, I can understand now, like, you know, I'll talk to people, whether it's, you know, like Mick or, you know, me and Justin talk about people that we'd like to do stories on. I'm mm-hmm. like, hey, look, I know you're probably not ready 
but when you're ready because it's experience is gnarly yeah. it's not the funnest things there is cool stuff stuff on the other side of it when you get there but it's there's a lot of not fun and then you talk about like oh yeah so this is justin's like first documentary i'm gonna give him my story he's gonna do it and we're gonna try to raise all this money like everything that i filtered in my brain kind of always were like it was kind of always failure it was kind of like he's gonna tell our stories for the first time and it's gonna be good like and he's gonna do like i'll just was like I don't know if it's I don't think it's gonna work out and I was like but I definitely as me as a, as a person I was I'm never scared of failure like yeah. failure is a fun place because it's like I wonder if I'm gonna make, for me it was always like I wonder if I'm gonna make it out okay and then when I get out I wonder if I'm going to just like pearl on every wave and then if I get cleaned up like and, and that was always my attraction to bigger waves mm-hmm. just wondering what's gonna happen so there was, there's all, there's always been that same curiosity in me and I'm, and I'm fine with this. So I was fine with the failure and I would, I would rationalize it as going like, look, it's just going to be a lot of healing from you. Like, even if it's only healing for you that you're able to get on the other side of this surfing thing and this being your identity and all that stuff, then is it worth it? And I'd be like, yep, it's worth it. I'll do it. And so, um, and then everything else is sort of just, it's out of your hands. You, it yeah. takes on a life of its own. You have faith and, and uh, you go, I wonder what's going to happen. So have you go day to day. Have you always been able to, to talk openly about your fears? You know, it's one thing to be able to like at, you know, later in life and being like, yeah, I've, I've got some success. I feel okay. We've done some work on myself. But to be <laughs> able to like, like talk openly, especially, you know, Tyler and I have this conversation, especially in surf culture, like macho guarded, you know, guys. And it's like hard to express yeah. vulnerability Was that the industry itself. Yeah. Like, I mean, doesn't it doesn't really encourage support that. that. Was that you something know? you were able to do, uh, growing up or along the way? Uh, I had trouble with that. I absolutely. I had trouble with that. I wasn't, um, it wasn't something I was taught, you know, as, as far as relating it to the surf industry and stuff. Um, I had trouble, I definitely always had trouble verbalizing those things. Um, so I was, you just me and myself, I was pretty closed door. And that's one of the reasons why I needed, we needed to, do, I felt like I needed to do this film, right? And then, because there's, there's been so much that have come from that. And now having the perspective of, uh, the funnest part for me now is I don't live in a performance-based world. I don't sit here to talk to you where I'm going like, what are my sponsors thinking? What are, you know, can I get some more money over here? And I got to try to, you know, get this, like, I don't do that with my wife anymore. I certainly don't do that in surfing. Like, I don't perform anymore. And and to be able to get out of that performance-based mindset and that story or that theme has allowed me to to, uh, not only articulate things, uh, well, hopefully, if, it, if it's making sense or not, we'll, we'll have to, that'll be de- to be determined. But um, it, it, it's allowed those things to happen, you know, and that's probably been the last three or four years. So yeah, yeah I mean, this is yeah. this is this is definitely different. Yeah, because you you're, you very much open up, and the film does a good job bringing us into your your marriages. You know, the the, the struggle, you know, getting married uh, young to a high school sweetheart, mm-hmm. um, and then the effect of the tour and. Um, uh, you talk about infidelity in the film. I mean, that stuff is like we don't like yeah. going in front of a camera <laughs> talking about that. And then I think I'm getting red right now, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, was was that what was the hardest part in terms of what I want to bring that feels like vulnerable and real um, when you were getting to that part and that and you're telling this story with Justin? I mean, for me, it was like. Um, it's it's i had to maybe do like an experiment really because it was like in my in i would i would understand the fact that like okay you exposing the worst things about you is what people will love and relate and um and identify right and then but in my mind i'm going uh, you know, there's shame, there's fear, there's anxiety. Like you just mentioning that gets me red. Like there's, th- but in in me, it feels really real to go. But that's not true, you know. Even when it is, I'm just going no. Isolate yourself. Like so, I had to just, I had to just do these things. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna bring all these things to the light, and I'll and I'll put them out there, and we'll just see what happens. But then there's always these other 
phases when it happens, you know, because then, you know, now my daughter's a lot older and I'm just going like, oh my gosh, what kind of damage did I do by exposing that? So then I go back to the same mindset and all those fears and, and those things that they, they feel, they come back again. And, uh, and then you watch the opposite happen, you know, Even, not only with your friends, but with your kids, but with people that watch the movie. And it's just, and it's just crazy that I, you know, I can sit here and go like the things that I feel sometimes feel so real aren't not maybe not even the truest thing about me, but not even be true in the sense of, of what I found out, you know? So it, that's, t- that's tough to articulate just right. Me trying to talk about that. Um, but how did your daughters feel about the film? Dude, they loved it. Uh-huh. They were looked at me and they were like, daddy, we loved it. And I, and I couldn't even process of why they loved it. And I asked my I asked a friend, I was like, gosh, I don't know. And then they were just like, they just want to be told the truth. Mm-hmm. Like, if you just tell your kids the, the truest thing, um, they, they, they can, they can, they're fine with that. They will, they will be great and they will grow from that, you know. Anything else beyond that, they'll have trouble with, you know. Right. And I was like, that's what I saw. That is what I saw. So, um, and, and, and that's what I'm going for and that's what I'm after in my life. This is a very small little instance, you know. Mm-hmm. These things, these things are everywhere, you know, and, and, and uh, so it's like, it, it doesn't stop, right? That doesn't stop till yeah. we're dead. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Um, they're kind of still on this, but kind of shifting a little bit of the topic. It, there's the part in the film where your ex-wife is talking about a critical point in your relationship. Uh, you had just confessed to, to infidelity and you wanted to work it out but you also had to go and compete um, in Europe for the next week to qualify. Um, And I think seeing it up on screen, it it feels like the choice, the way it was edited and everything, it seemed very obvious watching it. But I know in the time it it doesn't, it's not obvious. Um, You know, it seemed like you chose surfing over the relationship in some ways. And like, this is something like I struggle with too. Like we all struggle, like choose, I feel like, Sometimes we choose surfing over the our partners or the people we love, and it's always a really difficult balance. And uh, one of the things is like there obviously was a lot of contributing factors to your decision. Like you had mortgage, contracts, money, your rankings, all all the things that you think are very practical and pragmatic. And you're like, I'm just trying to think of taking care of everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas your ex was just more like emotional and wanted you to skip the contest. And I don't know, this, this to me is like really big. Like, why is it like men particularly, we, we seem to consider the practical, the non-emotional uh, parts of us. And, and do you think at time you were choosing surfing over the relationship? Or do you think you were just trying to provide, uh, you know, for the family and trying to do the responsible thing? Uh, I think, you know, at that point of the time, I... S- I sold myself on um, it's contract year. I got to make the tour. We just moved into this house. I I sold myself on a on a or I rationalized it yeah. with myself in a very worldly view. Yeah. Um, not only did I rationalize it in myself in a very worldly view, but dude, I chose surfing over everything until I retired. Wow. Like, I, I'm talking. Uh, my wife now which I was married when I was on tour like I did the same thing over again and not only that the hardest part for me was I chose surfing over everything until I got to the point where my born on date was just totally expired and like the the uh, the deep part of me was like I just want to get home to my kids I just want to get home to my kids and not only that I got home off tour and I was a straight SOB like I got home off tour and I was still trying to figure out how to choose surfing over the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just that story of like the things I want to do, I don't do and things I do want to do, you know? Yeah. And, and, um, so that was the internal struggle. And, uh, there was a couple of moments for, for me. I remember, uh, I was running, we have a cemetery down the street from my house and I was running by the cemetery and that was like, that's going to be you, dude. You're going to be in the grave 
and everyone's gonna be talking about you. Oh, this guy was such a great guy and such a great surfer, and he did all these great things. And I just had this picture of like my wife.